Hello, hello. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon and welcome. Welcome to the Unity Renowned Speaker Session with Colin Smith. Colin's going to do a Q&A today on planning and he's got a couple of deals that have been sent in as well um, yeah. for praise. So um, without further ado, um, over to Colin. Yeah, um, basically it's an it's a open, open season on your local planner. Um, ask away any questions that you've got. I haven't got anything prepared particularly to talk about, but I do have a few um, slides lurking in the background in case, uh, in case you uh, want to ask me anything. And I did get one deal um, sent to me uh, from Shane, uh, and I've had a little bit of a look at that, but uh, Shane doesn't appear to be here just yet. So um, we'll wait for that one. So. Does anybody want to open things? Hello, Sue. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm not all right. Sure I'm all right. Yeah, thank you. Good, good, good. Yeah, I'm not quite sure whether whether I'm driving this thing or not. Quite honestly, but we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. 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 So, um, how do we kick this off then? Any questions? Anything you want to ask? I don't have any. No, I'm just going to listen. You're just going to listen. All right. I see Graham's there. Hello, Graham. Hi, Colin. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Very, very well. Um, Great. Totally live and uns unscripted. So <laughs> let's see what. Well, oh, Sh Shane's arrived. Hi, Shane. Ah, oh, Shane's the one, is he? Shane's got the. Uh... Shane. Shane emailed me something to appraise. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I'm here just to listen, so I'll shut up. Oh, all right. Okay. Hi, Shane. Hello, Colin. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Nice to hear your voice. Long time. How's the family, by the way? Yeah, the family are all good. I can't complain. You can't complain. No. <laughs> Give it another few years, mate. Yeah, I like them. <laughs> they don't like me, but I like them at the moment, so that's all good. That's all good. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um... So if, it, if nobody's got any direct things they want to ask, um, I'm hoping that some of you have got some things that you want me to have a look at, or as I say, any questions. It doesn't have to be about permitted development. That, I know that's my specialism and the thing that people tend to ask me most about, but um, anything to do with planning and analysing stuff, you know, just, just far away. There's no such thing as a silly question, as they say um and uh yeah okay so any takers or should we have a look at shane's little deal first actually i have got one good thank you goodness can. hopefully it won't go on forever um <laughs> i i have a a contact who um occupies an equestrian property right uh which had um retrospective planning for equestrian buildings uh, about okay. 20, 20 years ago before she bought it right. um uh the uh, previous owner used to have race horses but okay. they didn't train them on site but they came when they were resting after a, an accident yeah. or something right yeah 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 um current people are running a, a livery yard um they wanted to extend the house and discovered that when the planning was granted for the stables 20 years ago there had been a planning con um, condition put on which looks like an ag tie and the ag tie isn't on the title but it is in the planning conditions for the stables okay they um, look for a um, certificate of lawful use in preparation to an application to extend the house, okay. and the council have come down and said that they're going to take enforcement action because the planning condition has never been met, which is an agricultural, classic agricultural wording. Okay, um, that's interesting. Okay, it? yeah, there's um, lots of angles there. Well, the the critical thing is just before they bought it, the lady who had had the race horse, race horses had died, and the house had been empty for about six months. Uh, 
and that is between end of 2013 and beginning of 2014. My friend bought it in 2014 and has occupied it with horses ever since. Previous lady, if you remember, had horses. She was not agricultural. Yeah. But for some reason, they'd slapped an agricultural restriction into the planning condition yeah. when the horsiness was granted. Right. Now, they have uh, stat, stat declarations from the um, people around the lady who died and they have over 30 years of horsiness but of course there is this break for when it was empty after she died okay councillor looking so the so what is the basic question i mean there's lots of questions i, I would think is, but can the council come for the enforcement is the key thing yeah i said i thought um, that probably could but i would ask yeah well my first straight off the bat without knowing the detail as such you need to see the paperwork but you can't have an agricultural restriction on a livery because agricultural is uh, not um, nothing to do with horses yeah. so unless no, horses no been agricultural yeah i mean if, if the premises aren't actually agricultural then how can you have an agricultural restriction um, have you have you actually had sight of the uh, restriction yourself? Have you read it? No, but I've been told that it's the cl classic um, employed wholly or you know in agriculture in the local area, yeah. or the widow or widower of such. Okay, like. so this this restriction was put on a permission to yes, allow to yeah. run as a, a, a livery. No, to run, um, to build stable. They built stables without permission. And okay. The council found them. Okay, and then retrospectively, they got permission, yeah. but then the council put on the restriction of the agricultural tie. Yes, and yet it's very bizarre because it's it they it wasn't an agricultural building in the first place. No, it's not. It you know as as you and I both know. Yeah. horses unless we eat them or use them to plow stuff yeah. or if they just grazing but they're, that, they're not and it looks as if it was the only way that the lady with the race horses could get her permission and presumably what they were doing was they were penalizing her in value terms by effectively yeah. giving her an ag tie even though it isn't on the title they yeah. essentially gave her an ag tie to diminish the value of the property. Yeah. Um, which is in a good spot in Surrey. Um, mm. As a penalty almost in, yeah. in return for having built stables without permission. And this is quite a while ago, like you say, about 20 yeah. years ago. So even if you look at it at very in basic uh, terms, um, the fact that she's been running a livery or a stable or something, housing horses uh, yeah. for more than 10 years, straight away, that's a, that's a material change of use. But they haven't got know. the 10 years because of the, because of the gap when the lady died. Oh, okay. And it's that that is causing the problem. Otherwise, okay. they'd, just, they'd get their, their lawful use. Right, so there is complication there. Like I say, my first thought is you can't have an agricultural tie on an equestrian um, use. No, I get uh, that, but presumably that was the only way that the lady got mm, her permission in the first place. Yeah, but what we're saying is that it, it can be challenged, can't it? So uh, a, a full planning application to actually have that condition removed is probably the first step um and uh you know for, for all the reasons that we've just discussed so um okay. i'd be quite interested to see the paperwork on that one to yeah. be honest let me go ahead I'll quite unusual. Time. let me go ahead and see if i can get hold of the actual documentation now yeah talk to you again thank you yeah you're very welcome that was quite interesting thank you sue maxwell <laughs> anybody for anybody else I see Paul's arrived. Hello, Paul. Who are you, sir? 
Who's that? Paul Bishop. Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Your 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 screen's off. Well, that's why that matters. I don't know why. Um, oh, yeah. maybe it's all turned off at this end from the driving seat. I'm not too sure. Not so. not sure. Nice it's to stuck. talk to you. Yeah. But just a quick one, Colin. My, my daughter just put an office an offer on a house. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a typical sixteen hundred square foot rectangular house okay there's like a, there's a walkway down the side and there's a separate um a separate double garage but it's not okay. joined to the house the only thing that's joined to the house is like a little brick, brick archway at the front and the back okay can can she can she use the permitted development rules to build over the top of the garage and just have a a link through with a bedroom upstairs? No, the, the only place that you can do uh, above ground uh, extensions is actually on the back. You can't yeah, do it on the right. You can't do it on the side. Yeah, I can't do it on the side. And the maximum distance on the so uh, height on the side is four meters. And you can't yeah. do it where it's facing a highway. And you can't yeah. do it in a conservation area off the top of my head. No. Yeah. No. So you would need planning permission to put something on top of the garage. Yeah. 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 I did think that, but I just thought I'd double check with you. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. That's, that's a brilliant. good start. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is. Any more for any more? I've got one, Colin, if you don't mind. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Hi, um, I'm in the process of trying to establish whether uh, a commercial property, the rear of a commercial property, can be converted into residential. Oh, and, uh, it's a bit of a strange one because it's um, it's a very big shop at the front, and it goes back. And at the moment, if you go onto the business rates register in the area. The rear is almost like a little barn type building, a sort of Victorian looking type, uh, a brick, brick built building, but it's, it's usage on the um, council register is down as a workshop. Okay. When, you go, when you go into, into that back building, which is about 62 square meters, um, is, is it, it looks like an, it's previously been used as an office. Right. And the, the issue is the seller has acquired the property via probate from his parents. And prior to that, um, we can't establish any leases or anything as to where the usage can be proved. Now, the okay. current owner is willing to confirm something along the lines of, as to the best of their knowledge, it yeah. was used as an office. Okay, uh, so um, if you walked into the shop, can you get into the back office? No. How do you get into it? Well, well, okay, so the answer to that question is it's not that simple. You, you walk through the shop. When you get to the back, there was previously an open area which you couldn't get back into the office, but they, they, they opened that and knocked it through, and now it's got like a bit of a lean-to on the top that you then walk into the back. But it's not actually a permanent structure. Someone's just kind of opened that there, and it could, could easily be blocked back up. So there could be two separate units. Okay. Is that the only way into it? No, it's got right of way and a rear access from a road behind. Okay, so you can put your bins out and so yeah. on out the back, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, well, all right. Um, so you're, you're asking, can, it, can the rear be converted to residential in some way? Um, yeah, I mean, what I did so far was I, I, I had a pre-app with Lewisham Council and I spoke to the chap there about it and, and he, he indicated that permitted development would be the best route to go down because a planning application might be quite difficult. It's quite overlooked by yeah. commercial properties and some residential as well, actually. But the, the main thing that he pointed out in the pre-app was proving the use class exactly yeah. as being office because yeah. he said if, if it's if it's a workshop i think that is more difficult or i'm, I'm not sure if it's even possible so um yeah. 
and that's that's what I'm trying to establish because, right. as I said, the owner will sign something and say yes, he believes it's a, a, an office, but whether that's good enough. Okay, yeah. so let's start from the beginning, and this that's quite an interesting one, and you'd be be surprised just how common that is. Yeah, um, people, I mean, especially at the moment, uh, there's a little bit of a gold rush going on. Mm. Uh, the high street is in danger, as we all know. Um, shops are going are shutting right you know right left and center which is a real shame uh, yeah. but there is a development opportunity there yeah. and it and obviously the government have recognized this because otherwise we wouldn't have the permitted development rights to to change the uses yeah. so <clears throat> what do you do right quite a long list of things to do now yeah at the top of your list the your planning officer is spot on you yeah. need to establish what that use is yeah. now um if it is unclear and the valuation office you know the value of, uh, office ag agency yeah uh, you yeah. just type in the address in the postcode and it will tell you what you know what the business uh, uh, class is yeah if that doesn't exist then the question then has any business rates ever been paid on that rear part they have. And they have. So yeah. from that point of view, yeah. does it say something like shop and premises? Okay, so I've got it right here. There's two Good. when you go on to um dot gov dot uk, there's two um that you can download. One is from two thousand and ten and one right. is from two thousand seventeen. Um, Seventeen's good. Yeah. So, so the the latest one says the front uh, ground floor is ground floor sales. Yes. And it's it's telling me the rates that they were paying was 764 pounds apparently. Okay. And then the rear area is down as workshop. 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 Yeah. So, and, and paying rates could... of about six grand. All right. So okay. in reality, in truth, okay. Yeah. Uh, between you and me and 10 other people, um, what, uh, what exactly were they doing in that rear shop? Have you any idea? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so when you go in there, there's a little kitchen. It, it, there's this quite. There's three different rooms, and there's a toilet in there as well. And it does actually look like it was used as almost like some desks with some offices. It's not. Okay. It's not like they had a printing business in the back there, and it was a kind of workshop area or something. So no. Um, I I think that straight away that's going to be quite a tricky one. Okay. Because because you're obviously having to prove a use. Yeah. Now when you're converting the uh, ground floor of something mm -hmm. then the option that is available under pd is class m yeah m for mother yeah. now the thing with class m it's quite useful but it's got restrictions to it yeah um and top of the the, the list of restrictions is it has to be a bona fide use of a1 retail a2 professional services a payday loan shop a laundrette and all that sort of stuff okay yeah. um and it's date stamped and off the top of my head it's the 20th of march 2013 i think it is yeah and, it, and it's that date or or earlier it doesn't need to be in current use it has to be in, in historic use and that use was never changed yeah so it could be derelict since 2013 for example but as long yeah. as the use didn't change and it wasn't actually abandoned i can't I think derelict's the wrong word, but you know what I mean? Like totally unused. Yeah. Um, that is the key thing. Now, if the VOA ha are saying it's uh, uh, retail, did, was it, and workshop? Yeah, they said the front, front, okay. uh, front, the front is sales and the, the rear is workshop, they're saying. Yeah. Okay, but it could be argued that yeah. it is a workshop that is ancillary to the primary business use yeah. which was shop retail whatever it was yeah okay now on the basis of that and then you'd use the voa as as the backup yeah somehow we need to find what the business rates were yeah. and whether there's any any correspondence from the local authority on that which will help back it up yeah. because how it works is that um you need to uh, um prove beyond reasonable doubt if you like um that uh what what the use is and if the local authority don't have any contrary evidence proof 
then they have to run with what you're saying. Right. Um, because if you p uh, produce a statutory declaration, um, then that, if you're fibbing, then that's the same as uh, committing perjury, which is a cr criminal offence. Yeah. So therefore, we know that we wouldn't do that, don't we? And yeah. and I'm therefore, in financial services, so I don't want to be uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> in, there you go. Any trouble with anything? So no. So you're doing everything above board, and if the local authority don't have any contrary evidence, then you're good to go. Okay. So th this is this sort of situation is quite common, whereby you think you've got an opportunity. But the major hurdle is to actually prove that use. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting thing, though. Um, with Class M, and you're just dealing with uh, the ground floor, you're pretty well snookered. You, you need to, to, to uh, establish that use. Yeah. But let's say you're in a situation where there's a, a, an iffy ground floor. You're not quite sure what that use is. Yeah. But there is a first floor accommodation. Yeah. Um, yeah you could go for a certificate of lawful use or actually a change of use planning application and change the whole building that's the first floor and upper floors as well to whatever use you're thinking to to, to do and by doing that you can then use class g for the upper floors unfortunately that won't work on this one because it's a single story shop Oh, okay. So, well, there you are. But that, that's, that one, if you if you see something else in the future yeah, where yeah, it's yeah. it's a bit you know grey area, yeah. If you've got access to the upper floors as well, then that is an opportunity because um, something I've done recently, um, whereby you're looking at a shop situation and there's already a flat upstairs. Now, yeah. for every retail unit under Class G, you can actually have two flats. But the bit that people don't always realise is that these um, uh, shops, they tend to have pitched roofs. Mm -hmm. So you can then change the use of the roof space into residential. Yeah. And that's, that is sometimes overlooked. And then you go for a separate planning application for the building work or what they call a shell application just to do the building work um and uh you're not asking for a change of use because you had that under pd so yeah. you've got the building work as a separate thing but that that's an aside just to bolt onto your query really yeah um but top of your list is somehow you've got to uh, um uh, rubber stamp for want of a better phrase what that use actually is Mm -hmm. And because it's ground floor, it needs to be on that particular date, which off the top of my head, I'm, I may be corrected, but it's the 20th of March or might have been May 2013. You can soon look it up, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Colin, are you OK if I email you some details on it for you to have a look at and then Peter's yeah. been giving me a bit of advice and he did say that I should get in touch with you anyway so I thought All I'd right. just jump on here but I'll send you over what I've got and maybe yeah. you can help out absolutely I, you know actually seeing the paperwork it, it, it's, it's probably quicker than um, talking it over to be honest yeah definitely that. and also I'll send you some images I've got from the front and the rear of the property as well so you and, and right. one from uh, above so you can see how, how it looks okay Let's see Thank how it goes. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Right. That was two tough questions straight off the bat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, any more for any more? Anybody? No? Well, and I had a couple, if that's all right. It's Phil. Yeah, sure. Hi, Phil. How are you doing? Yeah, very well. Uh, yeah, um, the, yeah, the first one was just regarding a, well, it's an office block, if you can call it an office block. It's more of a shop, really, with um, office at the front, office okay. at the back, and then there's offices upstairs as well. Um, okay. But it's next door to a pub. Um, and I wonder on the PD side of things, class O, whether or not the fact that, you know, with the noise side of it, whether or not that would be an issue. Obviously, you know, I don't even know if the pub will reopen after all this, but... Yeah. Um, that was the number one thing um, and then there was another thing with in between um, the pub and the unit there's like a service road to a few muse houses just the width of a car and maybe another half a car um, okay. and there's a doorway that would probably need to be punched into the side of the the, um, the unit to get access to the upstairs so it was those were the two main questions I had um well yeah um 
Class O, O for office. Um, yeah, noise can be a problem. Um, you need to get a sound report done or a sound assessment done to actually uh, determine what possible level that would be. Now, obviously, if the pub's shut at the moment, that's pretty difficult to do. <laughs> that may or may not be to your advantage, um, but the assessor could, you know, that they can, if you like, create uh, sufficient noise or disturbance, if you like, to uh, replicate that sort of uh, um, situation. Um, and local authorities are prone to, uh, how can I say, they're not particularly supportive of residential uses right bang next door to a pub. Let's put it like that. Right. Um, right. So that may be a problem. There are ways around it. Um, whereby windows and so forth can be uh, shut, you know, forced shut, closed shut, um, and then you put acoustic material around the edge of the window, uh, and then you're relying on mechanical ventilation. Um, but uh, local authorities tend to take a bit of a dim view of that. Um, so your first port of call would really to get a professional sound assessment done, just to see whether you know whether um, I don't know, the noise level from the pub would be too intrusive within a, a proposed residential uh, uh, setting. So um, not an easy one, I have to say. I think noise is one of the, the trickier ones with Class O. Yeah. Right. Brilliant. And the second question was, can you put the access on the side? Yeah, so it's kind of, I think there's about four to six house, sort of muse cottages down, down at the end. Um, right. It's kind of the width of probably maybe a car and a half. So it's currently got. Okay. There's actually currently a doorway that kind of goes into the um, into the side of the unit. Uh, kind so of. it would be a door to service the new residential units in in the existing office. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, well, um, under Class O, um, am I right in saying that? No, you would need to have um, uh, permission to actually create that door. But as a residential use has been created, I don't think that's been a problem. Some use classes, like Class M and Class Q, you can, there, there is um, uh, a degree of um, conversion work is actually allowed. Um, but under Class O, from memory, I don't think you can do that. I think right, it's only okay. a change of use only. Cool. I believe. No, I can double really check that, though. No, that's really helpful on that. And um, yeah, yeah. there was another one I was looking at, um, which was um potential for adding more units to it it's kind of a co already residential um and this question was more around the private amenity space um right. and the parking because there's there's not enough parking for what the local plan requires and i cannot right. find anything regarding private amenity space in the local plan i just mm. wondered what the what the kind of if there was a basic that they go for and how you go about reducing no, it really. i wish it was as easy as that <laughs> is this converting a building to flats then um it's uh, currently is flat but it would be um subdividing it further and adding so some new build to it as well yeah as a, as a very rough rule of thumb uh 25 square meters per flat is the sort of thing that they would look for um, in some cases, you can uh, provide balconies and so forth. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, you can get away with doing that. But they do like to have usually communal and uh, private amenity. So if somebody in a flat wanted to have a barbecue or something, they could. Um, but who, who does that? I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so as a very rough rule of thumb, most local authorities look at around about 25 square meters of, of amenity shared garden and, and and so forth and then when you have these you know uh, blocks of flats where that isn't so easy to do that's when you sort of resort back to having balconies and that sort of thing right so, okay. um, yeah perfect and i just had one just on kind of new pd stuff coming through um and obviously I've heard a lot about the airspace side of things, but this, mm. this one they're talking about with actually flattening office buildings and rebuilding yeah. them to avoid this, you know, rabbit hutch sort of um, yeah. development. Um, that, that was muted all oh, quite a long time ago, um, maybe as much as two years ago, it first came about and then it was put on the back burner because of Brexit. 
uh, people were too busy typing up the Brexit rules and planning wasn't really uh, important. And then as soon as they got Brexit out, out of the way, then we got this uh, COVID uh, pandemic. So um, we're sort of hoping that towards the end of the summer, autumn, uh, that that will come through. Um, so there's the airspace rights that you just said, but the, um, the uh, demolition right is more like a, um, a permission in principle, whereby uh, the, the overall um, uh, principle of development of changing an office to residential is okay, but the type of building uh, is probably not great for conversion. For example, um, a glass office block, for example, um, that might not be so, so easy to convert. Therefore, they would allow you to demolish it and then basically rebuild um, to something which will be more, more fitting in design. Um, but the, the details of that are we, a bit sketchy, to be honest. But we are looking forward to that one because there are still um, office opportunities around. But... Um, you know, most of them are quite expensive now. All the good ones are sort of being gobbled up and used. Yeah, that was my question, really, whether or not you thought there'd be opportunities, you know, with overpriced current stock that could be yeah. utilised with this. I, I do a little talk about offices, actually. Um, and it's not commonly known, but the majority of office to resi conversions are done from t changing the office use, but to flats. And they seem to think, well, that's the way to do it. But in actual fact, um, class O is, is, is a peculiar one because you can actually change it to houses instead. And when you get the older looking building, which looks sort of fairly residential anyway, um, I, I talk about how you would split the building vertically rather than horizontally. And the interesting thing about that is that when you split it vertically, you're creating houses and peculiarly to class O, you then get further permitted development rights to make the thing even bigger. So there are opportunities out there if you think about splitting them vertically rather than horizontally and understanding that you can actually extend them a little bit more. For example, rear extensions or uh, dormer, uh, dormer roofs and, and things like that. They can be added to a, a, an office under class O if you turn them into houses rather than flats. So, you know, it, it's, it's all about understanding what you can do and how you bring all these different areas together to make, you know, to make your strategy work. Well, that's brilliant. So, uh, it's quite interesting, yeah. Brilliant. That's okay. awesome. Thanks very much. All right. Very well Colin, um, I don't know if you have access to your email, but I've just forwarded another one on to you from Dave So. So, I don't think I'm sharing my screen, am I? No, not at the moment. No. Okay. Yeah. Hang on. Yes, yes, yes. It's, um, it's a shop with the HMO above it. Yeah, I've got it online. Yeah. Let's have a look. Leica Mobile, 24 Hour Express. Yeah, 100. Yeah. Well, am I allowed to give out the address? It doesn't really matter. Nice sash windows there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can see it. So how do we do this? Who, who shares what? Um, well, I let me share up the picture, first of all. Okay. And uh, so you can talk and, and, and concentrate on that and I'll share the picture. All right, and teamwork. Okay. Um, but this one, and, and the question is, how do you convert it? Well, what can you do with it? Oh, lots. In, in it, it, it's a textbook one. Oh, right. You'll like that. Cool. All depending so, on where it is. Yeah, so the ground floor is fully shop. It's a, it's a terrace, terrace shop. Um, and yeah. the floors above are a seven bedroom HMO. It's an HMO at the moment? Yeah, it's an Article 4 area. Um, it's a seven bed HMO at the moment. Right. Well, what the rules say um, 
it's obviously been a shop for quite some time by, by looking at it. I presume it's the one... Can you see that okay on the screens? I can, yeah. 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 Um, so I'm presuming it's the one that says Laker or like a mobile. Yeah, I put a faint red line around it. Not sure oh, yeah, you can see it. it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's the whole lot. It's, it's both. Oh, so it's a double width shop. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, again, your two permitted development friends are Class M and Class G. We use Class M on the ground floor, and then you can use some of it on the upper floors, but usually it works on the ground floor. And then we use Class G on the upper floors. So now we loved Class G. It's, my, it's probably one of my, apart from Q, which is all to do agricultural buildings, I think Class G is my favourite one. Um, now, where you've got a poten <coughs> potential of uh, um, a mixed use, so you probably go through the purple door to go upstairs, um, and uh, there you've got the, the HMO. Now, yeah, the actual pur purple door actually leads, it's an alleyway that goes all the way around the back, and the access is at the back to the, at the back. HMO. Okay. Yeah. So, what you would need to do there is um look at the ground floor first and make sure that it uh um, satisfies the permitted development rules of class m so as i was saying earlier um first thing to do is to uh, make sure that you've got the date stamp and, I, and again i think it's the 13th of march 2013 is the, is the date stamp and um it had to be in use on that date or prior. Well, obviously, by looking at it, it was. It mustn't be in a conservation area, which it doesn't look like it is. Um, and uh, it, you want to try and avoid a, a, a designated shopping area as well. I see there's other shops close by. Um, I don't know whether that's a high street or not. Yeah, but the way yeah, we no, get no. around that is that we maintain if it is in a in, in, in a resi, uh, sorry in a shopping area, we maintain the front of the of the shop unit as shops, so that elevationally and functionally you've still got shops. It doesn't take away from the use of the street. If it's not, if it's a, a corner shop type scenario in a in a village, for example, you don't need to worry about that so much. So that's the main things. You've got to make sure you've got the use. You've got to make sure that it's it's uh, um, not in a conservation area. And of course, PD doesn't work very well with listed buildings, so we avoid those as well. Now, there's other things you've got to think about, like contamination and parking and so on. But in this particular case, that, that I can see that would be a problem. So make sure you've got your class M first, and you can convert up to 150 square meters of that ground floor. And if you've got anything left over, it is possible then to, to convert the upper floors as well. But there's a caveat here, and that is that the whole building that you're trying to convert needs to be a shop or, or professional services. Okay, the, the whole thing must be. So in this particular case, you could do the grounds, uh, the, the downstairs, because it's, it's clearly a shop, up to 150 square meters, but you wouldn't be able to do anything upstairs with that. So straight away, I think you've got a pretty good chance just doing the ground floor. Now, but when the uppers are already flat, aren't they? It says it's an HMO. Yeah, seven now, HMO. If it's an HMO, then obviously the whole building is not then retail. You've got a mixed use, but the unit that we want to convert is ground ground floor, and then the second unit would be the first and the second floors. Okay, so what we then do is that you get a formal planning application to change the upper floors to ancillary retail use. So it could be ancillary office for the retail use. It could be an ancillary um, uh, a repair service to that retail use. For example, it looks like a mobile phone shop, is it? No, it's um, not. No, no, it's just because it's just it says mobile, that fooled me. Yeah, so, but what I'm saying is the upper floor, change it with a formal planning application to ancillary use. 
And then when that happens, then you can use class G to, to convert the upstairs to two flats for every ground floor unit that you have. And then from there, you can then change those class Gs into HMOs. That, that's a contentious point. Some local authorities uh, say that's okay, and some local authorities um, don't allow it. But you said you're in, in, in Article 4, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, then you couldn't, you, you would need formal planning permission to change it into an HMO. So th th this property's got a few little quirks with it, but it looks like that you can do the uh, the ground floor anyway and with a little bit of juggling you could probably do upstairs as well and turn it into flats. Dave is it licensed at the moment? Yep yeah licensed seven bed. Because it's hard to see but those upper floors um, uh, have you got full standing uh, I suppose you probably have got full standing heights yeah. at the window yeah so yeah. Um, yeah they do look like probably quite large rooms but I was just concerned about maybe a licensing issue there with the size mm. of the rooms on particularly on the top floor then. but the property's it, definitely got got scope anyway yeah is there any um because it's a current it's a sui generis hmo is there anything that you can do as in a, a dormer conversion or anything like that um that's a really good question um so i heard that recently as well that sui generis also benefits from so I would right. say in this particular case, no, because tech, mm, PD rights for extensions and lofts and dormers and so on uh, are class A, part one of the GPDO, and they apply to dwelling houses. And it's usually thought of that a dwelling house is a house. In some quarters, a dwelling house is also a flat, but flats are specifically excluded from part a right so i would think that in this particular case you don't have permitted development rights in this particular case now okay. that's actually quite interesting because if the thing was was uh, converted vertically the rear part of it could technically be a dwelling house but because of the front of it is partly retail on the ground floor it's obviously two units and therefore it's not a dwelling house. You, you could never say looking at that, that's a house, yeah. but yeah. it may look like a house from the back. So you could split it to the back as a separate dwelling. Possibly. It, it's, it's a bit of a, a tenuous link that I've got to say, but you know, I, I am renowned for being creative and I'll be looking at how I could actually do that. But the terminology is, um, extensions and dormers and, and alterations to a roof uh, they apply to only to dwelling houses and specifically not flats now all the time that you're playing with it and trying to make it into something else you could be actually losing a very valuable asset in that it's an article 4 area with a sui generis HMO yes. it might, yeah. you know which, which, which could be the jewel in the crown couldn't it because once you've lost that, it could be quite difficult to get it back again. Um, yeah, so yeah, I was looking at some way to actually maximise the use because the commercial at the bottom isn't working. And I think through COVID, they might have actually shut down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've got to do your sums. That's what that comes down to. Yeah. Um, so in effect, in a nutshell, the ground floor subject to conservation area and everything else is said. Up to 150 square metres. Yes, you can. The upper floor, yes, you can, but you need to make sure that the whole building is one use if it's a whole thing is a shop or ancillary to the shop or professional service or something. Mm. Um, yeah. and, and that's that's where you are. So it is possible. Um, yeah. But do you know, sometimes we're so busy trying to find loopholes and way, ways forward with things, it might be that a straightforward planning application might might work just as well rather than ha having to go through the various hoops and you know crossing all those obstacles when it might be quite straightforward just go for planning Dave, it, it might be pardon is it freehold yes yeah freehold and, and how does it, that work with the next door place because clearly it's broken through because the shop is carries on doesn't it it's like yeah, it's got so a flying so the, freehold 
the current tenant rented both shops and knocked it through. Right. So you, um, yeah. So it'd have to be put back. That would have to be um, put back. There'd be a few party yeah. wall issues, wouldn't there? Yeah. yeah. I noticed as well they've they've got a suspended window uh, in the in the first floor room there, which looks like it's an add-on, uh, and that's obviously increased a few square meters of room there. Um, yeah. Uh, which which window is that, Rupert? And the next door house. Oh right, yeah. So it's like a bay, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a suspended bay by the looks of it. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know that that looks like an add-on at some point. If you look at the the top yeah. windows, they look pretty similar uh, in a similar yeah. sort of age-ish. And also, as a little tip, um, yeah. always look at the planning history of these sort of buildings. Because it might have been that somebody's already had a little go at it, um, and you know, they 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 didn't get anywhere. Let's say, and it, they may have, there may be a way of fixing the problem. So yeah, so, always, so on, on this one, it is interesting because someone did actually try to um, make it into a ten bed HMO. Okay. By utilizing some more of the shop, the ground floor shop, right, um, as the HMO, and just having a small shop front. But mm. that that application stalled. Um, yeah. And speaking to planning, that I think they've they've said they'd probably allow an extra bedroom, maybe eight, but they want yeah. all the bedrooms and the kitchen to have good natural light. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you are to buy this, make sure you get your capital allowances in before you do the conversion on that ground floor area. Uh, right. And what what would what would that be? Well, that would basically give you some tax credits so that you don't pay so much tax in the future. Uh, okay, so would I need a surveyor to? Would. Yeah, you can talk yeah. to me separately about that. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. an important future strategy at the moment. I'm, I'm suggesting to people because I believe that um, tax rates in the next five years are going to go up quite considerably to recoup all of the giveaways and therefore yeah. to to buy a commercial unit and take advantage of the capital allowances that you can get from doing it. Um, that could be as valuable to you as making a profit on a flip, you know, even mm -hmm. if you just broke even on the deal uh, mm -hmm. and ended up holding on to the capital allowances, then that's probably not a bad strategy to take um, mm -hmm. to see you through the next five years or so. Okay. So, yeah, an interesting little project there. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Colin. There's, there's, there are quite a few options with it. Um, now, I think. Rupert, in about 10 minutes, you've got to go. Should, I've should got I have to go and pick up my motorhome from the MOT repairers because they're not going to keep it um, overnight. Okay, so can you give me the control so that I can share the screen, my own screen? I thought I, I thought you had that. Oh, hang on. Right, yes, I have got that. Yeah. All right, okay. So I'll get to that in a second. Um, any more? Or shall we have a, a look at Shane's uh, plot? Any more for any more? No? Okay. Let's see if I can make this work. Uh, see if I can share my screen. Okay. You should be able to see my Gmail account right now. Just flat. Uh, there it is. Just flat, is it? No, it's come up now. Yeah, this is from Shane. And Shane, can you hear me all right, Shane? Are you there? I am here, yeah. All right, let's, let's have a little look at this. So, um, are you worried about sharing the address? I did think that, but hey, if I, I'm, I'm directing... It's only to, us. If it happens, well, yeah. Okay, so the question is that this particular property <clears throat> is a corner property it's in Gloucester uh, it's quite an interesting architectural house I don't think it's in a conservation area um, and uh, it's got quite a long garden and it's on a corner like I say so um, let me see what I've got to do now, with zoom the controls always They always ask my thing. So if I now go to Google Maps and uh, 
Um, can anybody see my screen? Yeah, that's an interesting looking Gloucester there, the River of Seven going through past the Houses of Parliament. <laughs> no, that was one I made earlier. Okay, so if you can all see that. All right, so just by using tools that you've already got, um, you know, I got things like uh, um, Nimbus and, and so on, which are more sophisticated, but you know, just, just looking at things simply, this is the first thing that I would do having a look at it. Now, the site itself, as I say, I can't, that's it. The site itself is on a corner. It's quite a, an interesting house there it's, you know, it's got some architectural features about it but the road itself down uh, the pods mead road itself here um there's nothing really special about it at all now it has got a long garden so you think hmm, there's a possibility that maybe next to this pair of semis here i hope you can all see my mouse moving next to this pair of semis we might be able to put something there so how do we find out whether we can? Well, first of all, we need to measure the distance between the edge of this pair of semis and the rear of the of the actual host building. Okay. Now you probably know this already, but if you right click on Google Maps, you'll see down the bottom there it says measure distance. And with a bit of luck, I should be able to do that. And then that's what we like. We like this to be there. That's interesting. I'm just going to have to say clear measurement and try that again. I think that's because of my latency in the. Uh... Doesn't want to do it. Good. That's what we like. Try again. I hope it doesn't like it. Right, let's try again. Clear measurement. Never work with animals and children. Measure distance. Okay. Now from there, no, it still doesn't like it. Okay, let's do it another way. Right, let's do that. There you go. Now you probably I don't know if you can see that or not just stretch that as far as I can according to Google the distance between the back of the host house and the pair of semis is just under 28 meters okay and this is quite an important dimension so and you can make a note of this when you're trying to put a new house into a plot a couple of critical dimensions for you as a rule of thumb now all Local authorities have different rules and different ideas, and this is a rule of thumb. But if two houses are facing each other, i.e. front to front, the distance between the front doors, if you like, needs to be 22 metres minimum. All right? And if you're looking uh, front to flank, which is the side wall to the front door, you, the minimum that you can have is 11 meters. And as a general rule, a garden should not be less than 11 meters. And like I say, this is just a rule of thumb. And when you're doing this properly, you would look at local authority policies and design guides and so forth. But just when you're evaluating something really quickly, this is what you do. So you know that you've got just under 28 meters from the back of the host house to the side of the semi. Would you say that that's actually long enough or deep enough to actually put another house in? Well, we're not quite sure. So again, using Google, we can look at a very small house. I don't know if you can see that one just there, just on that part. But if we measured from, from there to there, it is just, call it, six and a half meters wide so if a house is six and a half meters wide i would guess that it's probably about nine meters deep yeah something like that 
so that's a two-story house so we know that's a three a three bedroom house because it's measuring round about 100 square meters there's a, a again a rule that says that three bedroom uh, houses shouldn't really be less than 95 square meters again it depends on local authority whether they, they adopt those standards or not but just gives you a rule of thumb so if you know that that house is call it six meters wide all right and we know that is 28 meters 28 minus 6 is uh, 22 and then if we now divide that into half then we know that we have got 11 meters either side we know that we've got a minimum of 11 meters for the host house and then we've got 11 meters to the flank and then we've got another six meters which are now allows us to put a house in there now there is one thing well there's a few things here um, I noticed that there's a bus stop make sure that your bus bus stop is not going to be in front of your access because that would be quite tricky to, to get that moved could be expensive um, and the width of the plot as well so we've got the, the depth has been uh, 20 whatever it was 28 meters and then roughly we can look from the edge I want to go from the edge of edge of the hedge uh, clear the measurement and I go from here and I go measure distance from there to I'm going to guess it as that there you go it's about 12 and a half meters wide now in my humble opinion that is really borderline as to get a house on there because your house would need to uh, be at least uh, eight to nine meters deep by six meters wide over two stories will, will give you roughly that 95 square meters roughly if my maths is right that wouldn't give very much space around the back but more importantly it wouldn't allow you any parking your parking would have to be almost along this part here if you can see where my see where my mouse is it'll be there somewhere now would that be acceptable now if you look down the side of the street here you can see how they are all park so in terms of character and parking and so forth it looks like that is a possibility um it, it's certainly something that i would look in a little bit more detail because just on very very quick analysis we know that we've got just about the width we've just about got the length we've picked up a house from down here we've measured that and we know that if we pick that up it would fit on the end of that garden there once we got that, that the basic bare bones we then look at that in a little bit more detail to see if it actually would fit. Now, there's one thing about this plot which I don't like, and that is the amount of trees and greenery in it. Now, on here, I sort of preloaded this. That, this, is, this is now um, Google Earth, um, as opposed to Google Maps, and you can see, um, you can see the host house there there and that's the pair of semis i was talking about and somewhere along here that's the house i was i, was, I measured and you can see if i pick that house up notwithstanding it's a, a conservatory on the back if i pick that house up it would fit yeah roughly okay and you just about got enough space between the flank and the back of the house here to give you that separation it is tight and that's why we have to look at it in a bit more detail but right bang in the middle of the garden look at the size of that tree okay what are the chances that it's got a tree preservation order on it or a try and, and, and put an application in the local hello what? hello can you hear me yeah is that a shame? No, 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 tree, no TPOs on those trees. I've been in touch with the council today. That's excellent. Take a chainsaw to it quick. Yeah, well, like, if you the, the other pictures they've got on your email, you see where yeah. the council has shades the bottom half of them. Yeah. So the bus can get past. And the, the guy who I've spoken to, who is the son of the guy in this house, he yeah. planted these trees 25 years ago. Oh, okay. Right. They look like conifers or something. Um, but uh, that, I think gives you a very quick way of appraising a site okay make a note of what your separation distances ought to be 
look at something close by and in this case i looked at this one here and i picked that up in mind's eye obviously i didn't literally pick it up and then i put it on the end of the site there and then i've measured the width i've deducted that width from the overall length of the garden and do i have 22 meters mm, yeah more or less it does need a bit more analysis but if you look at the overall character if i just go back to um google maps can you see the overall character of of that street yeah it's quite heavy quite quite heavy uh, uh well, it's quite dense isn't it um so when you look at that does it look unreasonable to continue this line can you see where my mouse is if you continue that ribbon of of, of houses could you put another one on the end there is that reasonable to expect that you could well it's it's not a yes but it's it's not a no either it's definitely something that's worth having a look at uh, in a little bit more detail so hopefully you found that um useful Colin, can i just ask a really quick question on the measurement of course you can yeah it was just um on the 11 meters so if um if that that looks like a quite an old house with no extensions but if they have extended or you know if they've done yeah. the four meters off the back do you go yeah. off the back of the original build of the property or would yeah, you do it per off the... personally i do yeah right, i do okay, cool. because somewhere in in the dim and distant past the owner made that decision to make his garden smaller so right, you right. know by, by having an extension so so therefore you know um that's my view anyway that's the sort of thing i would argue so and going forward with these with these massive extensions that people potentially can do on the single story, um, yeah. could this have an impact on this this sort of stuff? Um, yeah, possibly it can. Right. But but can you see the host building has got some sort of projection there? Yeah. Yeah. So that measures what does it measure? It measures nearly thirty meters from from the the original back wall, if you like, to this part, and that is probably you know. Uh, uh, the sort of distance that we really want to look for um, and if I move the back measurement to the I don't know what that is I'm presuming it's an extension or something I don't know and then there that's 27 so you're gaining two and a half meters aren't you which is is a car parking space in effect my concern is where is that bus stop will it um, interfere with a parking arrangement I'm going to try and put a six meter wide house in there, three bedroom house in there. If I need to put a parking space, would it go okay in that part there? Possibly it would. You know, so you've got a couple of parking spaces and a house and a fair amount of uh, garden left over. So it's not palatial by any means, um, but it's it's not a no. You know, sometimes you look at a, a scheme and go, no, definitely that wouldn't work. But that one it possibly could especially when you look at the overall character of what's going on that you know nobody's got massive gardens there there's one exception actually there's, there's a lot of greenery here for some reason um but if you look at everybody's back gardens they're all quite you know they're not massive are they so this garden is in many ways a little bit out of character to what's around it so that's how I would evaluate that in, in about 10 minutes, just to see whether it's got any legs. And then I'll think, yeah, it has. And then I'll start to look at planning history. I'd look at uh, to see if there's any uh, restrictions or constraints on the site and so on. The tree, <clears throat> but Shane has pointed that out, but that would have been a big concern. I'll be thinking, oh my God, I hope that's not an oak tree with a TPO on it. Um, and, and so on and so on and so on. Other things you might want to look at is whether it's in a flood, floodplain i doubt it um is it in a conservation area it doesn't look like it is to me so yeah i think you've got a, um, a fairly good chance i'll put it out at about six and a half seven out of ten as a chance put it like that okay thanks colin how are we doing i'll stop sharing and go back to seeing you all was that helpful good yeah <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. All right. So, anybody, any more for any more? No? I'm not sure if Rupert's still around or whether he's gone off to get his uh, 
his motor home. Yeah, I think, he, yeah. I think he's going to leave at five, and then he'll probably just leave due to yeah. safety and then it'll just close down. So, any questions on that at all? Or you're quite happy? Colin, I had one actually. Um, just yeah. for Colin, there was a property literally the if you case so if you built the house you're talking about and yeah. you know, at the front door there was one directly opposite so from a character perspective or um the fact that there's kind of already one sort of symmetrically opposite would that make much yeah. sense um yeah because i mean you got to ask yourself why was it allowed in the first place if it's you know a, quite an old property maybe the standards weren't so stringent back in the day um, but yeah, always look at what's around you in terms of character and try and emulate that character as best you can. Because be, to be honest with you, that's the first thing that a planning officer will do. Um, uh, when I do my little workshops, um, I talk about getting a, um, a, a piece of uh, uh, tracing paper and I will literally put my tracing paper on the computer screen and just trace an area the same size as the plot that I'm looking at and then overlay that on existing neighboring properties and just see how many properties would fit in that in that tracing um, and that's a really good way of uh, working out what the character is what the density is and, and so on um, so yeah always look at what's around you definitely oh, that's brilliant and funny enough I, I know a guy that's, that does a few of these sort of infill garden ones and he's yeah. actually had two deals fall through in the last four weeks because uh, people want to hold on to the bloody gardens right so i don't uh, know if that's going to be something in the next year or so here's i'll just share my screen again hang on a sec let's see right let's, let's go back to this one now you you sort of jogged something in my my head then what if you were able to talk to your neighbor this 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 gray house here next door to our host house and we had a little bit of their garden going that way, let's say. That makes the whole thing very viable then, doesn't it? So you, you're you basically going to buy the end of this, this garden and then the end of this garden and put them together so that you're making a rectangle going, if you like, north to south that way as opposed to, well, it's not north to south, is it? it's all, you know what I mean? It's going from this way rather than than, than this way. Um, that might be an option. Land assembly is a skill all on its own, though, you know, because you're not dealing with one tricky vendor, you're, you're going to be dealing with several. Trying to keep them all happy is, is difficult, but um, it is doable. But I would, I would be looking at maybe doing something there because you might be able to get two houses in doing it that way rather than just the one. But uh, yeah, anyway. And just on that, with with regard to the building line um, on the on the one on Podsmead Road, would yeah. you would you say you'd have to keep in line with the building line, or would you be able to stagger it forward a little? Or you'll be able to stagger it forward a little bit. You know, Brilliant. one or two meters isn't outrageous. Um, when you consider that you can put a porch on the front of your house uh, under permitted development, that in itself would, would would gain you one and a half meters if you want to go forward. Um, right. And sometimes those little tweaks are, are good enough to, to squeeze a car parking space in, for example. So, right. yeah, I think so. Yeah, of course. I mean, there, there is um, quite a strong building line. But if you were, if I don't know if you can see the white line, but if I just moved it to there, can you see the, the little blue car there? Yeah. All right. Well, a car is about five meters long. So if we went two and a half meters out from the front and that white line was now our building line, is that outrageous? I don't think so. No. Because I, I, could take, I could take the corner of that one and join it with the corner of this one, for example. And then, you know, straight away, you're taking the average. Right. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't think that's outrageous. If one, of the reason, one of the reasons I asked was because I've got a few of these on my land inside, which I've kind of appraised, but um, yeah. that extra couple of meters on quite a lot of the ones I've been looking at makes yeah. a difference between going to the next garden, yeah. you know, paying the, you know, whatever the key, price they're asking to make it viable. Yeah. A key thing to be mindful of is parking arrangements. Look, look at the existing parking 
they all reverse on and drive off or drive on and reverse out, don't they? That none of them are expected to actually uh, um, uh, drive in, turn and then drive out. Can you, can you see that? And that's, yep. quite a, that's quite a key thing there. Um, it looks in a uh, in a quite a busy area. Uh, it's obviously a very sustainable area. I don't think they'll be so worried about parking standards. I mean, the the trend at the moment is basically to get people to stop driving and get walking and using bicycles and public transport more than anything. Um, but then when you go down to the bigger roads like here, um, you know, the, the parking is a lot more difficult, I would say. But this one, I don't think that'd be a problem. And Colin, I've actually got, I've got a very similar um, site which I've I've got on well I've got on my landing site. I came across, um, yeah. and they got planning for um, it's two four beds in almost exactly the same format um, in two thousand and thirteen, but they never built them. Um, yeah. I don't know if someone pulled out the deal or whatever it was because it's three back gardens. If that was to go back in today, is there anything um, specific that's kind of come out in the last sort of seven eight years that I need no. to think about? No. Uh, lo but things that go through planning in that way, it's always dependent on uh, local policy. Um, it, it's rare for local policies to be updated more than once every five years. Very, very rare. Usually they're 10, 15, 20 year plans. Um, so 2013, I think you'll be really unlucky if there's anything substantially different um in policy terms um no i can't think of anything if anything things have got a little bit easier because there is a massive drive towards uh, uh you know providing housing supply yeah so they're, behind, they're like, behind on their um their numbers as well are they, they, a bit, they haven't Zeps got their five year. year yeah so that is that's another very very important point and i'm, I'm hoping you're going to say it's in a, in a um, sustainable town type of area is it pretty much yeah yeah so you know you don't have to walk too far to get to a bus stop yeah no um, it'd be perfect i think so it, it, it that sounds like an uh, an interesting one yeah definitely yeah okay not. right i'll shut up now so i didn't mean to take over on all of this no it's all right it's, <laughs> you know we've got to talk about something <laughs> thanks very much you're welcome all right any more for any more no colin hello Hi. who's that colin. that's um, judy hello it is. Hi there. I couldn't get my act together quickly enough to get some information over to you, but it would okay. be okay to drop you a line separately, just with a, a quick resume of a site that you've got me really do you want, thinking Do you about. want to do it live now? Um, I haven't got... I, you, you, it's, quite, well, it's, it's not complicated when you, see the, uh, when you see the picture and the OS map, but I can't get that information out of my system. Do you know enough. what the address is? I do, yes. Let's do that then. Let's have a bit of fun. Okay, all right. It's G. What the heck? It's, hang on, say that again. G U twenty two. G. That sounds like Guildford. G U twenty two. Um, yeah. seven. N for Nigel. T for Tommy. Okay, G U twenty two seven N T. Yes. Yes. All right. Here we go. Talk about flying by the seat of your pants. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> Works for me. Yeah, give it a go. What's the road? It's called Fairview Avenue and Fairview Close. Uh -huh. Right, I can't see that. Hang on. So, shall I say Fairview Avenue? Yep. As in Fairview, yeah? Yeah. Fairview Close. I've got the idea. Uh, and then you can tell me where it is. Okay, is it on the corner? Uh, yeah, the, yes. Uh, the, the, you, you'll see two blocks at right angles to one another, and then right. there's a car parking area um, sort of between them, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, all right. Can you see my screen okay? No, not at the moment. Oh, all right. Can't get the staff. Hang on. Right, tell me when you can see it. <coughs> okay, right. Yeah. So where is it? Right, okay. 
Lots of leaseholds, blimey. <laughs> yes, yeah, they're long leaseholds. That's another part of the complexity. All right. If you see just where your cursor is, is that block running north south. This bit. There. Yeah. The house on the end is not this well one? used. No, the other this, end, the northern end. This end? Yeah. That's not in good shape and we think that the owners want to sell. And okay. just, nor just north of that house is some grassy area and the car park. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see better there. That's a much better um, yeah. view of it. So what we were wondering, so what th these houses are three-story townhouses. Several of them are HMOs. Okay. In including this one, number seven. Um, and what we were wondering was whether we could buy number seven and maybe create, build out from number seven and perhaps create some flats. And we think there would still be room to... Um, Which way would you extend it? Uh, north. So what happens to this area here? Um, well, that's all, that's all private. It's, it's not public highway. Okay. Uh, so but this is parking, isn't it? Yeah, so if you effectively tacked another house on to number seven, but it could be flats, okay. there, would, there could still be room enough for parking, but you've got scope for another development at, the, at that northern edge there. Um, I don't think you could, personally, oh. because there is existing parking there, which has been allocated. Not We're allocated. Put... No, it's not allocated. Well, put it this way. There, there's a parking quota for all of these. So who, who owns the block? Um, the, the freehold is owned by a charity who does nothing. Right. And have you approached a charity? Not with this proposal, no. With other stuff we have, but not with this proposal. I think that's your first port of call whether they would entertain you buying number seven and seeing whether you can put something on the side. Um, but you have got parking there and that will get interfered with. Let's have a little look, Let's see what, see if there's a, a street view. It is, uh, there might be, but it's, as it's not public highway, would they necessarily? I don't know, let's have a give it a go. I don't know. I've got a feeling that Google's gonna say no. <laughs> No, I don't think so. No, we can't we can't see a view of that, can we? Oh, that's disappointing. It is, yeah. Um, so let's see who owns it all. Uh, private owner. And it looks like it's Just yeah, we don't. We, we know who the owner is, and they're just they're just not interested in in looking after the site or doing anything, and that's really part of the frustration. Yeah. It's the uh, Royal Society. Yeah. Own it. Yeah, and a title number and all that stuff. Yeah, we, we yeah we've got that information. It's just that um, the the people at number seven are difficult. We think they want to sell, and we just wondered if there was an opportunity to do something. I think that your your uh, options are very limited there, to be honest. Mm. If, mainly if, be, is that mainly because you think that would be displacement of the parking? Um, yeah, I think so. And for a new dwelling or something to be popped on the end, you would probably need to have to find parking for that as well. Yeah, yeah. That's understood. But, yeah, so, I mean, it's a very sustainable uh, location. It's quite close yeah. into the town centre. Yeah, I can see that. And lots of flats all the way around. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Um, I, I, I wouldn't give that a high chance, I'm sorry to say. Okay, well, I mean, that, that's honest. That's why I asked the question to see what you thought of it before we... Yeah started spending a lot of money to see whether it's doable yeah uh, i mean your first step is will the charity sell to you uh that's the question they, we think they would 
but mm. there could also be some significant liabilities and that's why we're hesitant so we would only take on the liabilities if there's um yeah. if there's an upside to and it there's there's a um there's other limitations as well because they're all leasehold and you would want to buy it so i presume that you would buy the lease as well would you yeah yeah, so we would buy the freehold from the charity and the lease of number seven. They're not in their different people. Right. So would you buy the whole site? We would just buy number the, seven. We would buy we would buy the whole freehold and the lease of number seven. Hmm. So yeah. it's not without its difficulties, but if it if it could pay, right. then it's quite interesting. It, it, it's certainly interesting um there's probably easier projects out there <laughs> yeah you're probably right <laughs> this, this, this one's got a lot of lot of hurdles to uh to, to cover anyway yeah. any more okay thank you for that you're welcome i'll go back to that okay oh finney how are you <sighs> Is there someone? Not too bad, thank you, uh, Colin. How, how are you doing? Yeah, all right. Not too bad. Nice to see you. You too, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we're 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 going through uh, an application at the moment, Vinny, and uh, uh, yeah, the local authority have been quite interesting. It's going through the legals at the moment, so we'll see where that goes. They're arguing the toss up between C three C and three C B at the moment, but uh, nothing to worry about. Good. Good. Yeah. Your hands, really? yeah. But uh, no, it's, it's always a good sign when you know that the solicitor's looking at it rather than a planning officer, because then at least it's a matter of fact, not opinion. I just came to this call maybe halfway through, um, but I came in when David so sh um, uh, showed his uh, Nottingham shop. So yeah, did you do many cases before that? Um, I, I might try and watch you and catch up. Yeah. yeah. I think this has been been recorded. Is it okay, yeah, fine. So I'll try and uh, try and get a copy of it from Rupert. Okay, uh, but that particular one was um, it. It looked like it was straightforward to begin with, and then it turns out that he's got an HMO above, and it's an Article Four. So it suddenly went a bit complicated. <laughs> but there's always avenues to to look at. Sure. Okay. Well, any any more for any more, or are we all done? No. Okay then. Well, as Rupert's not back yet, I think we'll need to uh, conclude this. And I'd like to thank you all very much for listening to me rabbiting on this afternoon. And if you do not have any uh, questions or queries or anything, then by all means, drop me an email or give me a call. You're very welcome. So thank you very much indeed. And uh, see you all soon. <laughs>